Hello, dear viewers, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we have an extraordinary topic to delve into, China's Monumental Water Project. In this video, we're going to embark on a comprehensive journey exploring the ins and outs of the ambitious endeavor that's reshaping the very landscape of China. So, grab a notepad and get ready to dive deep into the details. Let's get started. The South to North Water Diversion Project in China is the largest of its kind ever undertaken. The project involves drawing water from southern rivers and supplying it to the dry north. This massive scheme has already taken 50 years from conception to commencement and is expected to take almost as long to construct. Planned for completion in 2050, it will eventually divert 44.8 billion cubic meters of water annually to the population centers of the drier north. When finished, the work will link China's four main rivers, the Yangtze, Yellow River, Huaihe, and Haihe, and requires the construction of three diversion routes stretching to the north across the eastern, central, and western parts of the country. The complete project is expected to cost 62 billion, more than twice as much as the country's controversial Three Gorges Dam. South to North Water Diversion Project Background Northern China has long been a center of population, industry, and agriculture, and with all three growing apace, the per capita share of the region's limited water resources has inevitably kept falling. Historically, this has led to the overexploitation of groundwater, often supplying urban and industrial development at the expense of agriculture, leading to severe water shortages in rural areas. In addition, land subsidies in the region's frequent sandstorms have also been linked to the excessive use of groundwater. The late chairman Mao Zedong first proposed the idea of the diversion project in 1952, intending the ambitious scheme to ease the growing water shortages in the cities of Beijing and Tianjin, and the northern provinces Hebei and Henan and Shandong. On 23rd August 2002, 50 years later, after extensive research, planning and discussion, the project was approved by the state council and work began on the eastern route of the project in December, construction commencing on the central route a year later. A special limited liability company has been created to cover construction, operation, and maintenance of the main project, with each province being required to set up a water supply company to manage the local administration and infrastructure elements. Eastern Route of Water Diversion Project The eastern route was expected to supply Shandong province and the northern part of Jiangsu during 2007 a year ahead of the original schedule, linking Shandong with the Yangtze River and bringing water north, the Huanghaihe Plain via the beijing Huangsu Grand Canal, but was delayed. Diverted from a major branch of Yangtze River near Yangzhou City, the water will travel along existing river channels to the Weishan Mountains of Shandong, before crossing the Yellow River via a tunnel and flowing to Tianjin. The finished diversion will be slightly over 1,155 kilometers long and involves the construction of 23 pumping stations with the installed capacity of 453.7 MW in the first stage alone to complement the seven existing ones, which will themselves be rehabilitated and upgraded. This part of the project will also include nearly 9 kilometers of tunnels from the outlet of Dongping Lake to the inlet of Weilin Canal, including a 634-meter-long siphon section, together with two 9.3-meter diameter horizontal tunnels 70 meters under the Huanghe Riverbed. Several key projects of the eastern route have been completed, however, the work on the route was delayed due to farm and industrial pollution that endangers the quality of water. It is expected to be completed by 2013. Water Diversion Project Central Route Construction of the Central Route began in December 2003. It was planned to be finished before the commencement of Beijing Olympic Games in August 2008 to provide Beijing with drinking water. However, by September 2008, only 307 kilometers of the Central Route had been completed. The Central Route diverts water from the Danjiangku Reservoir of the Han River via new canals near the west edge of the Huanghaihe Plain to flow through Henan and Hebei provinces to Beijing a diversion route totaling some 1,267 kilometers in length. The Central Route project has been postponed in 2014 due to the expansion of the Danjiangku Reservoir. The nearby city of Tianjin will also draw water from the trunk line near Zushui in Hebei Province, initially designed to transfer 9.5 billion cubic meters of water. By 2030, some 13 to 14 billion cubic meters will be flowing along this system. The work also includes the construction of two tunnels of 8.5 meter internal diameter, some 7 kilometers long, with a flow design of 500-500 meters a second. Declining reserves in the Danjiangku Reservoir have led to the suggestion of drawing water from the Three Gorges Reservoir to bolster the supply and meet the demands of this part of the project. 
The water from Han River is yet to come through the completed canal. However, water in the canal flows from various High Bay Province reservoirs. The Central Route project was scheduled for completion by 2010, but has been postponed to 2014 due to environmental concerns and for the expansion of the Don Zhangku Reservoir on the route. Western Routes of Water Diversion Construction of the Western Route, which involves working on the Kyonghe Tibet Plateau between 3,000 meters and 5,000 meters above sea level, is scheduled to begin in 2010 and will involve overcoming some major engineering and climatic challenges. Once completed in 2050, the project will bring 4 billion cubic meters of water from three tributaries of the Yangtze, the Tongtian, Yalong, and Dadu rivers nearly 500 kilometers across from the Bayangkala Mountains and then on to northwest China. At the symposium in Beijing in 2006, officials from the Yellow River Water Resources Committee called for preparatory steps to be taken swiftly to hasten the construction of this route of the project. It has been predicted that an additional 4.5 billion cubic meters of water will be required by 2030 to maintain economic growth in the region with its booming population and major construction and development projects. South to North Water Diversion Project Funding Construction costs of the eastern and central routes is estimated to be 254.6 yuan. China has received 53.87 billion yuan for the South to North Water Diversion Project. Of the 53.87 billion yuan, the central government has budgeted 15.42 billion special funds in treasury bonds from central government accounts for 10.65 billion yuan and local governments are funding 7.99 billion yuan. Loans will contribute 19.81 billion yuan for the project. The construction costs of the project have drastically changed due to hikes in commodity prices, changes in the national policy and investment structures of the project. Around 30.48 billion yuan of the earmarked amount has been spent for the construction of eastern and central routes. Water Diversion Project Environmental Concerns like China's other mega-projects, the Three Gorges Dam, the diversion scheme has provoked many environmental concerns, principally regarding the loss of antiquities, the displacement of people, and the destruction of pasture land. China's water diversion scheme has provoked many environmental concerns. In addition, plans for further industrialization along the routes of the project pose a serious risk of pollution to the diverted water. To help counter this threat, the Chinese government has earmarked just over 80 million for Jiangdu. Huayan, Sukyan, and Zhuzhou in the east of Jiangsu province to build treatment facilities, though estimates suggest that the actual cost is more than double this figure. Overall, around 260 projects have been instigated to reduce pollution and help ensure that water in the areas of the diversion project will meet minimum drinking standards. And there you have it, folks, a detailed exploration of China's grand water project. From its inception to its potential impact on China and the world, this initiative is undeniably reshaping the nation's landscape. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey. If you're enjoying the video, don't forget to hit that like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe for more in-depth content. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.